So this week we are studying chapter 12, in Hebrew it's called Perikid Beis, and this is the most exciting part of the Tanya. We finally got to uh, why the Tanya was written, and that is because we're going to learn about the uh, personality type, the spiritual personality type, as the Tanya calls it, the Beinoni. Beinoni. Yeah. And matter of fact, one of the names for this book, besides being called Tanya, actually it's called Sefer Shalbeinim, the book of the personality, someone that's called a Beinoni. And the reason is because the Beinoni, as we're going to see today, we're going to get into the life of the Beinoni. The Beinoni is the um, personality that, that the Alter Rebbe says that every single person could reach that level. What does that mean? To be a tzaddik is not easy. Everything's attainable, there's a will, there's a way, but it's not easy and you really can't demand from someone to be a tzaddik. I mean, it's pretty intense. If they can get there, wonderful. To be a Russia, why would we want to discuss that, right? That's not an option for us. But really, the reality is, is to be the Bainani. So the real question now is, what, what does the Bainani mean? So in this chapter, the altar begins the process of teaching us what the Bainani is, who the Bainani is, and as we know, knowledge is power. When you know who the Bainani is, and what he is, and how he operates, we could adapt ourselves to hopefully be a nice little Bainani, or a big Bainani, whatever it may be. So we're going to learn today what the Bainani is. So what is the Bainani? So if you remember from the last few weeks, the spiritual makeup of the human being is made up of two parts. Well, many, but for this conversation, two parts. One is the term in Hebrew, it's called koichas anefesh, the powers of the soul. And we know the powers of the soul, in the powers of the soul, there's two departments, the intellect, which is divided up of three, chachma binodas, and the emotions, which is divided up of chesed gur tferes, netzachot yisod, and malchus. That is the koichas anefesh, and you have those equally on the godly soul side and the animal soul side. And then you have, as we discussed, the garments, the levushim. What are the garments? The garments are your thought, speech, and action. Those are the two areas. Now, to get to understand what the Bainini is, let's look real quick what a tzaddik was, what a rush was, and then let's see where the Bainini is. So if you remember the way the author explained it very, very simply and clearly, that the key definition, what made someone a tzaddik, and what made someone a Russia was one point. Their love they had for God. In other words, the tzaddik loves God so much, so when you love God so much, there is no room for anything other than God. For sure not thought, speech, and action, but even in emotions, even in ideas or thoughts, nothing. You know, if you love God so much, the way a tzaddik loves God, and the way one should love God, obsessively, obsessively that's a good term, obsessively, <laughs> you'll never even think of sinning. And in there, the author explained, that's the different levels of the tzaddik. Like he was at 95%, let's say, so he's already not a tzaddik, you know, v'toivlo, he's a tzaddik rali. On the other extreme was the rasha. And the rasha is one, didn't care about God. The love wasn't on, the, there was no love there. You want to serve God, no problem. So he didn't mind that the godly soul served God or had a relationship with God, but there was no fire rolling there. No passion. And because, obviously, it wasn't a love for God, he's classified as Russia, as we discussed last week. Okay. So where's the Bainini come in the middle? Does he have the love or doesn't he have the love? Yeah. If he has the love, then he's a Tzaddik. If he doesn't have the love, then he's a Russia. So what's this Bainini middle personality here? So the author explains, in short, and that is as follows. The love that the Bainini has is strong, extremely strong, very, very strong for God, but only takes root in three areas. His thought, speech, and action. In other words, because he loves God so much, so it's totally inconceivable, inconceivable for, the, for the Benoni to do anything that is counter to godliness. Therefore, he will do every single mitzvah, 248. He won't transgress of any one to 365 mitzvot. 
speech, he'll only talk positive, happy, about God, holiness, beautiful stuff, and for sure nothing negative, or counter to godliness. His thoughts are going to be all holy, positive. So because his love is so strong, thought, speech, and action, he is just like the tzaddik. There is no difference. Yeah. And in the thought, speech, and action, he and the tzaddik match up. They can go for a match. And guess what? There'll be a tie. Notice they both, tzaddik and the bainini, thought, speech, and action, batting 100%. Now, the Russia in a certain hand we know does the same thing also. What's the, where, is, where is the issue? The issue is like this. By the tzaddik, the righteous one, what did he do to the animal soul? Because his love for God is so great, the animal soul has zero stage time. <laughs> zero minutes at the mic. <laughs> the only one at the mic is the tzaddik. The, the, the animal soul, no thoughts are, will ever even enter the tzaddik's arena. It's not even a, a question because the love is so great that there's no room for, for, the, for, the, for the animal soul to get up and make an opinion or have a thought or even like, you know, have a, uh, an emotion that he wants to do something Catholic God. It doesn't exist. We're talking about in the, in the world of intellect and emotions. On the other hand, by the Russia, all day long, he thinks of all the things he wants to do and really obsesses over it and has desires and temptations. The Benoni, and here's the, here's the, 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 the unique struggle, the Benoni on one hand, his godly soul thinks only about God, meditates only about God, only has positive ha happy thoughts, etc. However, the animal soul is equally as strong. So in the world of intellect and emotions, the animal soul is strong. He has ideas, what he wants, not necessarily the greatest ideas. It could be bad, you know, for, so in the Hebrew term, isur, forbidden, or it could be things which are permissible but inappropriate. Same thing with emotions. He has feelings for things which are inappropriate or maybe absolutely wrong. So here is the major difference between the tzaddik the Russia and the Benini. The tzaddik is, so to speak, like an angel, in a good way. Thought, speech, and action, he does everything what God wants. Animal soul, no struggle. Not because he, he fights with it, no. Because he is so in love with God, there's no room for anything else. There's no room for it. Like, why would you, if you're busy dealing with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, why would you look at a penny? So the tzaddik, his love for God is so great, he doesn't even allow any thoughts or feel. No, it's not, he doesn't allow, it's not there. The love is, uh, totally took over, totally took over. The rush, on the other hand, who runs the roost? Who runs the house? His wild thoughts and his, and his, uh, and his, uh, his thoughts, his feelings, his ideas, etc. The Benini, on the other hand, they're both, fully engaged. In other words, the, in the Benini, the godly soul wants that relationship with God, thinks about God, feels God, yeah. but he has a partner <laughs> in the same body, the animal soul. He wants his desires. Some could be forbidden, and some could be just totally indulging in the materialistic world, but the godly soul has zero interest in indulging in the materialistic world. Here lies the struggle. Here lies the struggle. And because it's a constant struggle, it's not like it's just for an hour a day. The struggle the Bainini has, 24-7. As a tzaddik, it's like living at peace. He's in love with God. He has just a lot. Life is wonderful. When is he in love with God? 24-7. So life is simple. The Russia, 20 or 7, is in love with himself. Life is simple. They both have really two simple lives. The tzaddik has a simple life, I just love God. You know, it's like one way street, there's nothing in the way, nothing in the road, right? The Russia, just love myself. One way street, nothing stopping him, right? The Benoni 
has like almost like a car with two steering wheels and the golly's still trying to pull to the right, <laughs> right? But at the same time, the animal's all pulling to the left. You're gonna burn out some tires and some brakes and a lot of gas. That, but that is the life of the Bainani. In, those, in actuality, the, the, the Bainani, his godly soul, will still make sure we don't transgress, we do all the commandments, we say all the right things, our thoughts. The struggle, where's the struggle? It's a fine struggle. It's a fine struggle, no peace. 24-7, you said. And it's 24-7. What means no peace? He wants to go right now and pray. He wants to study. He wants to do a mitzvah. The animal soul says, why? Let's go do something else, right? These voices, it's like, every, almost like a, the self-esteem is like pretty, is struggling. His confidence is struggling. Let's go have fun. Let's go have fun. <laughs> so, what, what do we do to help the Bainani? What do we do to help the Bainani? Because it's not fun to live a life where you're being pulled in two different directions. Now, if we were a tzaddik, we wouldn't have to worry about the Bainani, right? But the question is, are we really in that level? Everyone's now, a huh? Everyone's a Bainani. Exactly. Yeah. Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem, exactly. Now, if we're, we're not going to say if we're Russia, because we're not Russians. You know, we, we really want to serve God, and we, yeah. you know, et cetera. We, we, huh? I don't want to be Russian. We don't want to be that, exactly. <laughs> no. So the truth is that really, we, our life, according to the Alter Rebbe, that's why it's called the Book of the Tanya, the Book of the Bainani, that he's dealing with every individual who's human, who's human, who has a godly soul, that basically, in, okay, you know what, bottom line is I'm not going to trust. I'm going to do all the mitzvot. Even though I'm not in the mood, I'll do it anyway. I'll say all the right things even though I'm not in the mood, right? I'll think all the right things. But on the other hand, how come it's not automatic? Because you're not tzaddik. You're not tzaddik. So how do we help the Bainani to give them, so to speak, uh, some leverage? So first of all, the Altar says something very interesting, and that's as follows. That the Bainani, when he prays, when he prays, whether it's a prayer service, a communal prayer service, mm -hmm. or reads the book of Psalms, yeah. or privately when he prays, you know, there's different prayers that you do. So what happens is when, a, when, a, when the Bainani is praying, so what's happening now? His godly soul is being fired up automatically. If you say, okay, you know what, right now it's uh, afternoon service, or morning service, or evening service, or I just want to say some Psalms right now, which Psalms is a prayer, right? And you stop praying. What happens now? Who gets excited? The, the godly, godly soul or the animal soul? soul. The there you go, the godly soul gets excited. And if you pray with kavana, it means if you think, and that's why, that's why according to the Rebbe, um, it's important, imperative, that a person have kavana. Kavana means has intention while you're praying. And even if you can't have intention of every single word, but before you start, say, listen, I'm praying to you, God, which that basically focuses you in that it's not just the words that you're saying, but you're actually getting into the prayer service. So the Rebbe says when a person, it, 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 kavana, Having intention is very, very important. Why? Because when you pray and you have kavana, and the more kavana you have, what you're really doing is the godly soul is getting excited. And the excitement that the godly soul has spills over into the animal soul. And during prayer, guess what? The animal soul is sleeping. Just like the tzaddik. So in other words, like the tzaddik is 24-7, the benoni can accomplish that during prayer. And that's why um, the real avoda for a Bainani is to pray for two reasons. But we'll talk about the two reasons in a second. So that's why the avoda for the Bainani is to pray, because when the Bainani prays, guess what happens to him? He fires up his godly soul. His godly soul is fired up anyway, but he fires it up more to the point where it spills over into the animal soul. So the godly soul gets fired up, Fired up to the point that it's so fired up that it gets into the animal soul, and the animal soul is now excited about God. And that's why it says in the Talmud that a person's having a struggle, go into the synagogue, stop praying. Why? Because the minute you stop praying, the godly soul got a boost, you put like a turbo engine to it, it's spilling over energy where? All over the place, including the animal soul.
So when a person is praying, right, think about it. If you're praying now to God, you're talking to God, oh my God, please help me. If it's a personal prayer, or you're saying the prayer service with Kavana, what right now is taking place in your mind? One thing. God, your love for God. What's your, your feeling in your heart? Your love for God, right? What happens now to your animal soul? By default, it oh. has a love for God. Oh, I thought I went to sleep. <laughs> no, it's excited. What do you mean? You're praying, you're, you're, you're singing, you're dancing. So the okay. animal soul gets okay. excited about God, right? Okay. So during prayer, just like the tzaddik. Now, so two things happen during prayer. One is that you get excited. Second thing that happens is as follows. What happens when you finish praying? Turbo shut off, right? The intention is shut off. The godly soul's back to his place, and guess who wakes up? Yeah. The animal soul. The animal soul. And he starts again churning his ideas and his feelings. Nudging you. Nudging you. <laughs> Nudging you. So it comes along the altar, and the altar says, that there's a residual, residual effect from the prayer service. So it doesn't, let's say you pray, for example, from 9 to 10 for an hour. So from 9 to 10, this guy's like a tzaddik. You, yeah. Right? You put the tzaddik in, ooh, animal soul, like, ooh, fire, right? But not only from 9 to 10, this creates a residual effect throughout the day. Wow. That means it's not just for the time of prayer, but it lasts for a few hours. And that's why you pray in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, and before you go to sleep, and if you have some free time, say some psalms. Because while you're praying, you're not getting into trouble. Think about it. Let's say you're sitting, you, you know, in the afternoon, you have an extra hour, right? So you can choose to do nothing. You don't have to where you do nothing. You're getting into trouble. Your mind starts going to the wrong places. You also start saying the wrong thing. You start gossiping, whatever it may be. But instead, you pull out a book of psalms. Right now, guess where, you're, where are you at? In a great place. You're automatically in a good place. And that's why um, a very, very age-old uh, mystical uh, secret is don't go with an empty head. Don't go with an empty head. What does that mean? You should always be praying, studying, like thinking, or right. words of Torah, have some prayers by heart, and you can say them to yourself by heart. Always have something coming out of your lips. Why? Because as long as you're saying, guess what? You're in safe zone. Not only in your safe zone for now, but it will, it will have an effect for you afterwards also. Now, the reality is you can't pray all day, right? There's other things you have to do. You got to work, you got to take care of the kids, the family, a business, whatever it may be. So now when you go out of safe zone, so again, remember, Bainini safe zone, I like the level of a tzaddik when he prays. Why doesn't he leave safe zone and you can't pray or you're driving in a car, you stop praying, you'll get into an accident, right? right. But now the problem is your mind is empty. Uh -oh. Your heart is empty. Boom, 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 boom. Who, who's here? The animal soul is rolling in. Right? He's rolling in. So here is the key thing. Here's the key thing. When you're either doing nothing or doing something simple, all of a sudden you get this thought. It could be a negative thought pessimistic thought, mm -hmm. an angry thought, anything that you put in the category from, from the animal soul trying to get you, uh, get you down. So what happens is that has the power to take over. Once it creeps in, then it starts, you know, like a virus. But the Bainini is careful, and this is a key point, the Bainini is careful that the minute that idea comes up, you ever go to uh, like one of these amusement parks and they have this game where like thing pops up and you have to hit it down, and, you know, you know What's it called? Whack them all. Whack them all, right? You got to whack them down. So like this. So no, this is the rule. This is the rule. If the thing comes up, right, you didn't lose anything. When do you lose? If you don't pop it down. You got it? Whack them all, right? So that, exactly. Same, same idea. This is the same game in the spiritual world. So now we're saying that whack them all actually has its roots in Kabbalah. In exactly. Very there you go. We've covered there. it all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm happy we have someone that knows the name of the game. Whack-a-mole. whack a -mole. Okay, so what happens? So the, so the alchemist is like this. When you're sitting and thinking, and all of a sudden the thing pops up, right? The whack-a-mole pops up. The negative thought. 
Are you responsible? Are you like? Are you? Um, are you? Are, are you? Um, can you be accountable for that? For that thing p popping up? No. no. That's the game. That's the game right now. What you're at. But you oh, it. one second. One second. The fact that it popped up, we're okay. But if you let it sitting there, you don't get your hand and pop it back down. Now you're going to trouble. So in other words, the bane and knee. When your prayer free zone. Out of prayer, make sure you have the hammer. Or whatever that thing is called. What's the thing called? It's a hammer. A whacker. There you go. A whacker. A mallet. A mallet. Make sure you have the mallet. And as you're, I guarantee you, if you're a Bainini, you will have erroneous thoughts, bad thoughts, negative thoughts, inappropriate thoughts come up. And that's okay. That's okay for a split second. But the minute it comes up, knock it down. And that's basically what the Bainini does all day. He's either praying and he's in the safe zone, or he has these thoughts that come up and we're going to knock it out. So you can get back into the safe zone. Correct. Yes, exactly. Now, so the question is, the question is a simple question. Yeah. Since the Benoni has these ideas that are coming up to his head, right? Who said the godly souls is more powerful? Maybe the animal soul has also a mallet and knocks down the godly soul's thought. And now you're at war with each other, right? The godly soul wants to think positive, and the animal soul wants to think negative. So we're sitting here like kings. Guess what? You know what? You have a thought. Thoughts are going to happen. We, we, we can't guarantee fail-proof no thoughts. That's the way God made us, as long as you're a Benini, until you get rid of the animal soul. But guess what? You knock it down. Hold on a second. Maybe the animal soul will knock me down. My positive thoughts. Right? Who said, one is, why are you guaranteed you're going to win? Maybe you're going to lose. So comes along the altar and he brings from the Zohar, from Kabbalah, and that says as follows. This is a Kabbalah truth. From the Zohar. From the Zohar, which okay. is the Kabbalah. It says like this. That God gave us the intellect and God gave us the heart. Where does the godly soul reside, we, we discussed this and learned about this, where does the godly soul reside? In the intellect. The godly soul is in the intellect. Where does the animal soul reside? In the heart. We don't even mean physically, we mean spiritually. What does that mean? The intellect knows right from wrong. You ask the intellect what's the truth, I'll tell you the truth. The godly soul knows the truth. What's the truth? God runs the world and we should only love God. The animal soul is more excitement, passion, has a feel. Right? So the Zohar says, Moach, which is the intellect, Shalit, rules alalei betaldasi. That the intellect has power to overcome the heart in its nature. It means in the nature, the way God made things, the intellect and the emotions are not in the same plane. The intellect is more powerful than the emotions. The same way, the godly soul is more powerful than the, than, the, than the animal soul. So therefore, if there's a battle between whack-a-mole and they each have a whacker, who's going to win? By default, the godly soul is winning. And he gives an example, the al Rabbi, which is a very, very practical, tangible example. He says like this. Let's say you have a room. And the room is dark. It's at night, right? The windows are closed. Lights are off. There's no, uh, no natural light in here, or even during the day, if there's no natural light, right? You're in a cellar, wherever it may be, it's dark. So now you want to be light, right? So what do you do? Either light a candle, or you put on a switch and the light goes on, any form of light. So the author asks a simple question, hold on. You went ahead and put on this light. It was a dark room. It was a dark room. You put on a light. Whoa, it became light, whoa! Why did it become light? Why didn't the darkness push out the light? You have two forces. You have a force of darkness. The light is more powerful. Ah, exactly. You have a force of darkness and a force of light. But you ever see that you put on a light and it remains dark or gets darker? Never. Never. Why is that? Because God made the nature that oil, light, is more powerful than darkness scientific, whatever you want to call it, religion, you're not religious. The fact is, light is more powerful than darkness. Spiritually also. Oh, same thing spiritually also. 
the godly soul is more powerful than the, than the animal soul. In other words, the only way the animal soul can take charge has to be two things. One is, he has an idea, and B, you don't stop him. Because if you stop him, he's finished. If you stop him, he's finished. Just like the light is, is more powerful than the darkness. So therefore, the minute you have a negative thought, a pessimistic thought, an inappropriate thought, an erroneous thought, whether to do something forbidden or even something which is inappropriate, you can immediately say, no, we're not doing that. We are godly people. We think positive. We think only what God wants. We only do appropriate things. You know what happens? He runs for cover. You just need to stand up to him just like you put on the light. All of a sudden, the darkness runs away. Not only the darkness runs away, but all the cockroaches that are out there you know, run away too, right? They all run away when the light comes on. It's a funny thing. I mean, you didn't do anything to them. You even touched them. But why is that? Light has much more power than darkness. So in other words, as long as you are on your toes, where the minute you see it coming up, down, right, it's gone. Now, I'm not saying it's not, it's, it's not going to be another one in two minutes yeah. or in an hour or whatever it may be. But the stronger you're able to say, no, we love God, we're going to do what God wants, guess what happens? You're going to do what God wants. You'll be in this state. So therefore, so therefore, the Benoni, besides the fact that in action he does what God wants, and besides the fact that in thought he does what God wants, and in speech, he even has the power to overcome his struggle with his animal soul that he has not conquered by A, praying, and B, when he's not praying, that the minute a bad idea or thought comes up, say, listen, we don't do that, right? Not appropriate for us. It goes sheds away. Light, it goes light. away. You know, the fact that it wants to you know, penetrate, that's okay. That's his job. You can't say, well, why is the animal soul doing this to me? Whoa, that's his job. His job is to make sure you stay on your toes <laughs> until you get rid of him. And as long as you don't get rid of him and it's not an easy job to get rid of him, just subdue him. Tell him, hey, not here, not in this house, right? I mean, think about when you educate, you know, children or students. It's all about education. Say, listen, I know you want to do that, but we don't do that. What happens? They listen. Well, you don't have to fight with them. People want to do the right thing. And here, the altar goes into a, um, so to speak, a home run with the next concept. And that is as follows. And this will literally, this is really the real power that we each have. And I think this is one of the biggest revolutions that Tanya introduced to us that gives you real power. And that is as follows. And the power of the Bainani. So what happens... Um, if you have this idea of hate in your mind, right? You have hate in your mind. Anger. So what did we say before? Whoa! Tell the animal soul. Where's the, where's the hate and the anger coming from? Where? From the godly soul? The anim from the animal, animal soul. soul. So what do you say to the animal soul? No, 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 no. We don't do any hate. We don't do any anger. Right? Guess what? It goes away. It's going to try another way. It's going to try from, you know, it, it tries from different angles to come in, but as long as uh, you come and listen, you know, I know you were here, I'm nice to see you, you don't have to do it angrily, nice to see you again, but you know, wrong house, wrong person, maybe you try somewhere, I mean, I don't have to give them addresses where to go to, believe me, they know where to go, right? They go. <laughs> but it tries again, because that's its job. <laughs> that's its job, one second, that's its job. That's its job, that's its job. But comes the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe says, knowing the enemy, knowing the enemy is power to overcome the enemy. So what's the goal of the animal soul? Again, remember this clearly. What's the goal of the animal soul? To get you to be angry, to get you to be full of hate, right? So he, ha he thinks of brilliant ways how to get to you. How does he get to you? And this is like one of the biggest tricks that unfortunately most people fall for. Most people fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you the trick, mm -hmm. what he does. And, you, and once you know it, it'll be much easier next time it happens. Most people fall for this. I've seen many of the biggest people fall for this. What happens, the animal soul somehow gets your friend or your relative or your neighbor to do something upsetting to you and very upsetting to you and maybe even like you can call it, he betrayed you and he hurt you or she, he or she hurt you or embarrassed you. So what happens now, 
You get angry. So the altar says, who's doing that to you? Not your friend. Your not your relative. No, not your relative. Not, not your neighbor. What do you think? It's the animal soul in the other person that's teaming up with your animal soul to get your godly soul to get angry. They have two against one. The other person's animal soul, because why would your friend or neighbor do that to you? You know what I mean? The animal soul got, got the better of them, right? And now they come to your animal soul, look! Look what that person did to you! You're so now you're outnumbered. They have two against one. And then what happens automatically by default? What do you do? You get angry. But one second, you're not supposed to get angry, because it tricked you. Because it's two against one, and they even brought a scenario. You heard what they said? You heard what they did? And now this, the, the pot is cooking. The pot is cooking. Because it's your animal soul, the other person's animal soul, and they have a whole story. The story is, you heard what the person said about you, and you heard what the person did to you? Whoa, stop a second. Let's put things in perspective. Who's creating that story? The godly soul, the animal soul, and company. It's the animal souls that got together and are, and are trapping you. You're now like in a, you're getting ready to be pulled into their spider web. Because they know the minute you get angry, they got you. They got you. Your godly soul's out to lunch. The animal soul is brewing, and now you're going to call another friend, and before you know it, you have 20 people involved in the fight. And meanwhile, who's winning? The animal soul and each and every one of you are winning. That's true. And we are not That's anymore true. And we, are, we lost our status of Benini. We probably we, went over to the status of Russia. We lost, lost our <laughs> peace. Yes, very good. We lost, we lost our, our peace, peace and, and happiness. Joy. So comes along the altar and says, Know your enemy. It has nothing to do with your friend. It was a story that was concocted by who? By the animal soul. The American saying is, um, keep your friends close, your enemies close. So the altar oh. says, the altar says, how do you fight such an animal soul? If you think you're just going to push it down, guess what? They already have 20 people cooking the story. And before you know it, it's going to be 30. You think by just knocking it down, you're going to knock out this animal soul? How are you going to do that? Yeah, you can knock it down, but guess what? It's a pretty hard fight. See, the author says you have to pull some major ammunition. The godly soul has to pull like a rocket, right? A powerful rocket to knock out that animal soul. What's the rocket to knock out the animal soul? Say, guess what? A, A, I'm not getting angry. And B, here comes the big rocket. I'm actually going to do something very nice for my friend or my neighbor or my relative. And now you blew their cover. Now you blew the cover. Because the last thing you want, they want to see you is doing nice things to people. Not only are you doing, so not, now they, 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 you actually cause them to cause you to do nice things. They're not going to stop with you again. They know you're the wrong guy to try to, to, try to um, get into the spider web. So the key thing the altar says is when the animal soul starts to get you angry because your friend or your relative or your mother or your sister or whatever did this and you heard they said and you should never talk to them and right, they're getting you going. So, ah, I don't hate anybody. Not only I don't hate anybody, I love everybody. And not only that, you thought I was going to hate them? Guess what? I am going to do something extremely nice to that person who you said was trying to hurt me and abuse me and do whatever they wanted to me. Whoa. And the altar says, guess what? You think I'm making this up? It's in the Torah. The famous story with Joseph. What happened with Joseph? Joseph's brothers wanted to kill him. And they sold him as a slave. And he saved them from starvation. What happens when he came to Egypt? Not only did he save them, but they were embarrassed. They came to him, Joseph, oh my gosh, you know, and they made up a whole story. Our father said, you should be nice to us. He says, you didn't do anything to me. You think you were not nice? You think you wanted to kill me? You think you wanted to, you think you sold me into slavery? Please. It was God that sent me down here so that I can help you. And Joseph was extremely nice to them. Yeah, so the altar says, any time the animal soul, yours, or someone else says, hey, you heard what this one said, what that one says, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a child, a spouse, a friend, a neighbor, guess what? Thank you. I love everybody. And not only do I love them, I'm going to actually help them. What you, did you just do? Not only you knock out the Yetzirah, you knocked him out so big time that he's shocked. And guess what? You think he's going to be starting up with you again? No. no, because look what he did. He caused you to score points. Positive <laughs> points. He doesn't want that. His goal is for you to get angry. 
he realized right, when I try to incite this guy to get angry, not only doesn't he get angry, he, do, he not only doesn't get angry, he's, he, he's, he's nice and nicer and actually does nice things for them. Oh my gosh, it's blowing our whole, whole plan. <coughs> and this, the author says, this is the real power of the Bainani. The power of the Bainani is not that he just doesn't listen to the animal soul, not that he doesn't listen to the thoughts and feelings, but on the contrary. If a thought comes up, A, he blows it out, and B, he's extremely opposite. He's extremely more nice where the animal soul would think he'd be upset. Because again, the animal soul and the godly soul, two different frequencies, two different agendas. The animal soul's goal is to get you to be angry, upset, not in love with God, <coughs> and not to be positive and happy. But what is the godly soul's goal in life? To be extremely happy. And when you're going to try to get me to be unhappy and to be angry and to get into a fight, guess what? No, I'm going to actually be the person's, the person's best friend. So here you see, and again, obviously, this is just chapter 12. The author will, goes more into this, the life of the Baini, because this is the life. And you'll see the way, uh, once you have this, so to speak, as a framework, as a foundation, from here on, the next several chapters, the author goes into the real um, nitty-gritty, day-to-day uh, struggles and g- goes through like f- uh, foundation issues that the Bainuni has. But this, so to speak, lays the groundwork, knowing that the Bainuni, non-negotiable, is thought, speech, and action. There's all the mitzvot. Says all the right things. Things all the right th- thoughts. His weakness is... He, that he, his animal soul is still strong and it will still try to play str- tricks on him in his thought and, uh, in his, in his, thought and in his, uh, his mind and his heart. And the way to combat that, as the author said, was one is pray. Just pray. And that will get you in a safe zone. When you're not praying, then watch for those guys creeping in, the animal, idea, animal soul negative ideas creeping in. The minute it comes in, Knock it out. Not only knock it out, but double up on the kindness. So practically speaking, is let's say for example, he wants you to get sad about something, the animal soul. We know you can't be sad with God. You have to always be happy. Um, depressed, for sure not, right? So what does he want to get you upset? On the contrary, I'm going to be even happier. And guess what happens? He knows, oh my gosh, let this guy alone because I'm just, gonna, I'm just feeding him to, to become a better person. And from here, we're going to continue going on to the life of the Bainini. But as you can tell, this is literally a, a, such a, an important chapter in life. I'm sure if you think about your life and your days and so on and so forth, we can all see that we have these struggles of the Bainini in some way, shape, or form, however it plays out. But if, we're, if we're, we know our enemy, then we know what's not negotiable, and we know what to do when it tries to attack us. Pray. If you're not praying... Be positive and say, no, it's not negotiable, I'm going to be happy. Oh, really? You want me to get into a fight with that person? Hey, how you doing? What can I do for you? Can I do something nice for you? And this way, you'll always stay in a beautiful, safe, and happy zone, even perhaps when you're not praying, you'll always be able to do the right thing.